Hi and welcome back to the channel. This time we're going to talk about Unity WebRTC and Stun Server and how to use a data channel. So I already started my editor and my smartphone, which are on different networks. And on the right side, you see the signal server, which is online on glitch.com. And just let me clear the logs here to give you a better overview. And now everything is connected and I can either send messages via the WebSocket. You can see the logs here on the server online, WebSocket test, and within the editor or via the WebRTC data channel, which are also logged in the editor, but not on the online server as the WebRTC message is sent via the stun server. And it also works the other way around. If you click on WebRTC here, to your smartphone, then you see that there was something received on the WebRTC channel. So welcome back to the channel. Let's say let's get started. And first of all, I just want to thank the YouTube supporters. You can see here for supporting the channel and already having the memberships. And please consider to become a member too. It really helps the channel grow and it helps me doing videos like this on a regular basis. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I'm currently working on a few things and you will be surprised what might come up. But nevertheless, let's have a look at how to use WebRTC data channel with stun server. And you may have seen the regular LAN data channel video already. I will link it in the upper right corner for you to rewatch it, where I explain how the whole WebRTC communication is working and how you can create this yourself. If you want to access the source code, again, consider becoming a channel member on YouTube. And let's have a look at the project first. So we have three buttons here. This is a test message for WebSocket, a WebRTC test message and something to clear the logs, at least in the UI. And the hierarchy looks like the following. It's a main camera some kind of lighting, the global volume and so on is just the default stuff. There's one script which acts as a sender and then receiver. The stun data channel script here using a stun server. We'll look into that in a few minutes. And a simple canvas, which has a logger text, which is here for logging. And three buttons that are linked to our stun server script, controlling the message flow, either sending via web circuit, web RTC, or clearing the logs. This object is the event system used for UI and the screen logger. You already know that from the other videos I've done on WebRTC. So let's have a look into the stun data channel script. The first big change you may notice here is that we're using a native WebSocket, the native WebSocket library. I just open the web page real quick. You see the WebSocket we're using for connecting to a WebSocket script. This change has one reason, because when setting up the server on Glitch, we need a custom header and the, web so the WebSocket Sharp library doesn't support custom headers as it's pretty old and I'm quite sure not that well maintained. So just switching to native WebSockets. And I'm pretty sure the next videos will also use native WebSockets as it's basically the same when handling the on the code side and it has a few more configuration capabilities. So I'll link it down in the description box. For feel free to use it too. And so we are having the booleans here. I'll just make the code a little bit bigger for you to better read on YouTube. We have our peer connection, two data channels, one for sending, one for receiving. A WebSocket client ID, which is basically the game object name something for receiving the offer, something for receiving the answer. Again, the script will act as sender and receiver. So we will just put everything into this one script and we have an async start method where I'm just creating the new WebSocket, creating the header. This is especially important for Glitch. So we just have to tell the Glitch web page that our user agent is something. You can write anything in here and this would not be possible as at least as far as I know with the WebSocket Sharp library. And as soon as the WebSocket opens, this is something that it's also different from the other scripts. 
WebSocket Sharp had an issue with the onOpen method, so I had to organize it myself in the start method with native WebSocket library. It's now possible to use the onOpen method to set up everything. And the first thing here is the stun server. We're just using the standard Google one. You can just Google it. There are a few public stun servers you can use here. Afterwards, we are taking this configuration and bring it to our RTC peer connection. The same is basically as always, we have the candidate exchange. We're sending the data to a web server, which will then distribute it to every other client. There will be a logging of the connection, sta connection state change. And here is the first data channel, send the data channel on open, on close. We're just going to create the data channel and log when it's open and closed. And for the connection, the on data channel method, this means we are going to receive our data here. We're saving the reference for the receiving data channel. This must be done, otherwise the channel will close after a few seconds and we're just logging whatever we're getting here. Same is here on negotiation needed is for starting the RTC peer connection. And we'll start the coroutine for creating an offer, receiving an answer and so on. And in the on message part, as we had it before, is everything regarding signaling, we are getting an offer, we will send an answer, we're getting the answer, we're just setting everything up, we're exchanging the candidate data here, and if nothing of this use cases for signaling is used, we'll just print out everything to the console, and in the end we're going to connect our web server. Please make sure to use the right link here. This is a secure WebSocket connection as Glitch requires us to having a secure connection. In your case, this may be different. It's just a WebSocket connection, the different URL. So feel free to play around here. And for the update method is always, I'm receiving an offer, I'm receiving an answer, sending something via the message channel. It's also here and sending something via the WebSocket channel is here. And Another difference to the WebSocket Sharp library is that we have to manually dispatch the message queue here for native WebSocket, which is basically not a problem. So it's just the three lines. Um, on this try, we're going to close everything down. And here are the core routines for creating an offer, creating the answer, sending all the stuff over WebSocket, setting the description for remote description, and sending public methods for sending the messages so we can bind that to our buttons. Going back to Glitch, on Glitch you can just create a new node server and delete everything so that it might look like here. Please note that this um, running node server will be shut down by me after the video is published, so you are not able to use this, you have to set up your own. And one of the things you have to do is to open the package JSON and in the dependencies, you will have to add the WebSocket node package. You can just Google it. I'll just do it for you. Here we are having the WS package here, Node.js WebSocket library, and we're just adding that to the package.json and Glitch will install it for us. And the other one that you have to change is the package, uh, the service JS. So we're creating a WebSocket here, port 5000. And every time on connection, we're just uh, logging that a client is connected, the socket, every time receiving a message, we'll just print it here and sending this to all clients except the sender. Same goes for on close. And we're logging server is listening when starting. So you can see we already disconnected as we were testing before and so on and so on. We're having all the candidate answer data and so on logged here. That's pretty easy to use. And here in the package manager, you see, I have to be imported the native WebSocket Git. You can use it here. So sometimes you just want to test and not have everything on your smartphone and distributed somewhere else. So you can just duplicate this object here, disable the script for the start and 
we just have to manually enable it later on. We can just make it a little bit more obvious by disabling the game object. So you can set test purely in the editor as long as this one is running. We're just switching it up so we can see it side by side. Let's start it in the editor. Here we go, clearing the logs here and enable this disabled game object. And we see, okay, we opened the channel, everything is completed. Everything is locked here on glitch. And we can just send message via WebSocket. Here is our WebSocket message and the message via the WebRTC data channel, which is locked, but not locked on the WebSocket server. For everything else, it's just the same as always. You can delete that. You can put that you can build that for Android, bring it to your smartphone, and regardless of the network you're in, everything will be handled via the online WebSocket server or the WebRTC data channel. Please make sure to look out for your firewall. There may be some issues here. I have my firewall active and everything is working, but sometimes if you're behind a router or any device that blocks the communication, there may be some issues. So feel free to test it. And I hope that helped you creating your own WebRTC data channel connection with the help of Stun server and an online WebSocket signaling server. If there are any questions, feel free to comment down below, leave a like, subscribe, and again, consider becoming a member. This helps me creating more videos like this. And if you have the correct tier, you may also get access to the source code. So take care. I'll see you soon and goodbye.